Uh, thanks, Deepak. Thanks, uh, DVO, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, glad to be here talking about some of the experiences, some of the learnings that I have had working on one of the leading platforms in this country, Voot, uh, which is a video on demand platform which has more than 40,000 plus hours of content that appeals to both the adults and the kids. Voot Kids, which is one of the really big differentiators that we have, that we have, that we have up our sleeve, which garners massive engagement, massive numbers coming in on an everyday basis, seeing engagement time close to 30 minutes every day, every viewer, and this is what, just about a year, year and a half into business, and we have already started seeing some really big numbers. And proud to be over here and talking about some of the nuggets, some of the intelligence, some of the interesting things that we have seen, that we have observed, that we have experienced in the last couple of months. I will try and not delve too deep into the future of the kids' entertainment on digital because then future very clearly is uh, scary. Uh, future is very, uh, we, we don't know what future beckons and I think the moment marketers and product managers and business heads, the moment they start predicting what's in store for future, I think we make a very fundamental mistake which is we all tend to underestimate the long term and overestimate the short term and which is a fallacy which I'm not going to fall for. Let's start with one interactive question. What do you guys think is the peak viewing time of kids content on Wood Kids, on Wood platform? Any guesses? Which hour of the day do you think the peak consumption of kids content happens? Sorry? Midnight. Okay, I don't know what you, what you are thinking that they're watching. Three, four, five, four to six. Perfect. That's the answer which is the wrong answer. Absolutely right. Early prime, afternoon time, we've all been brought up in this world where we have been told, where we have observed that kids come from school, they take off their bags, they switch on their TV, and they watch cartoons on TV, right? Early prime time, they wake up from their sleep, they go, they go out to play, they come back, and then they again watch some TV. The moment the father enters the house, the remote is handed over to the father, and then the kid is supposed to go back to sleep, have his dinner, and do nothing whatsoever as far as viewing is concerned. That is exactly the phenomenon that still happens in this country at large because India still is more than 90% a single TV household. Which essentially means, which essentially means that at 9 p.m. when the father or the mother want to watch news, sports, or their favorite GC content pieces, that's the time, my friends, the mobile phone is actually passed on to the kids. And on Voot, what we have seen is that the peak viewing time is at 9 p.m., which is the prime time. So the prime time for adults on TV is the prime time for kids on a platform like Voot, because we are still operating, and I repeat myself, in a single TV household. Great. The first, the second theme, we all know this, right? They learn to swipe before they learn to walk or talk. Touch screen has fundamentally changed the way kids have watched, kids are going to watch, and kids will continue to watch their favorite content on these devices. The design, the versatility, the intuitive interface 
is something which comes very very natural to the kids unlike the world of mouse or a remote where you had to teach the kids ki aise click karo and this is the output this is what you will get to see on the screen on that laptop or on the desktop or on the tv screen this world is completely different kids know exactly how they want to do and what they want to do this entire aspect of tactile touching which is i touch i feel and something magical happens is what separates the touch screen technology from all the technology that has been there before that and what it means is that 35 more than 35 crore indians who are under the age of 15 for these people the digital devices have very clearly and predominantly become the primary screen of content consumption and that entails a big big responsibility and accountability for each one of us because these people they do not carry any excess baggage on their heads or on their shoulders about the movement from the world of tv to desktop to laptop and mobile these people in the truest form are the digital natives and as adults who are sitting over here do the question that we need to ask is do we really understand their behavior do we really understand the behavior of these digital natives whether you call them as gen x gen y gen z now there's this new term called gen edge people who are born after 2000 how much do you really know about them because the important from a product point of view one of the things that we need to understand is that people like us are designing the apps and the discoverability and the ui and the ux for the kids and we as adults carry lot of excess baggage baggage in terms of technology preferences baggage in terms of how we grew up when we were kids biases with respect to how we would want to discover the content biases with respect to how the interface should look whether it should really be we might think oh you know what i really love the whites and the blacks because this is re this really looks very very premium this looks very very sophisticated but lo behold kids love kids exist in the world of colors in multi colors but we also need to understand that they have tiny hands are you really making those buttons on the app or even on the mobile screen for all you know which can really help the kid navigate his way through to discover his favorite tunes his favorite characters and this i think friends is a very very onerous task but while i say this while i say this designing for the for the kids you also need to understand is this specific app or is this specific interface or is this specific experience only going to cater to the kids or to the parents as well because in this world the kids might be the consumers but parents continue to be the gatekeepers if for example there is a troubleshoot if there is a problem there are technical slack just the way just the technical slack snag i experience right now can the parent come and find his way to solve their problem is that app only going to be used by the kid or is the parent also an active participant in watching x x y z kind of content on that platform and these exactly are the questions that we all need to ask ourselves we binge they rewind and repeat we all know we love watching seasons whether it's for english shows or for hindi shows we see one episode and then we see the next we see the next we see the next we see the next right kids watch this and then again this and then again this and then again this on wood kids on an average a single video gets watched eight times over a single video 
Now, that poses a lot of critical questions to the publishing team, to the discoverability team, the UX team, and of course to the uh, team that's looking after the personalization. On the adult side of the content, when I say adult, I actually feel very scared. When I say adult, I essentially mean non-kids content, TV shows and movies, etc. It's not the adult content uh, the way we might perceive it to be. On the adult content, when our publishing team publishes content every day, right? if someone has seen the previous episode, what they would get to see is the next episode. right? But in the case of kids, that logic is a flawed one. You need to put the episode that he has seen, and then, of course, so that he discovers more and newer and different kind of content pieces and newer episodes, you also need to place the next episode, but you cannot have a publishing rationale which is devoid of the content that he had seen maybe yesterday or in the morning or a week earlier or a month earlier. Because that is what he's really familiar with. And that brings me to this. In the adult world, familiarity breeds contempt, right? That's, that's a very popular saying. In our case, in the, in the case of kids, sorry, it actually breeds love. They don't care about 100,000 hours of content. I've got so much of content that your entire days and months and years will be filled with multiple stories. They don't care two cents on that. What they care about are those really popular characters, are those really top tunes that they are in love with. And while I say this about the kids, I think fundamentally you would see this happening more and more even in the world of adults. As the supply of content increases all around us, as the glut increases of content, we all have started seeing seasons of popular shows and popular movies happening more often than not. Because to sell a new piece of content, to create a new fandom, is a really tough task. Harry Potter, multiple seasons. Star Wars, multiple sequels. Right? You just, Spider-Man, your, your superheroes, you take, why just Hollywood movies? You talk about, let's just take the case of Indian movies as well. Every movie, every popular show has started focusing more and more on sequels. Because there is this existing big fandom that, that's there. And the challenge is to how to really leverage it. And on Wood Kids, for example, when we placed the Motu Patlu from Nickelodeon franchise, sitting right next to Chota Bheem from Pogo, sitting right next to Pokemon, sitting right next to Benton from Cartoon Network, the 80 of the, 10, of the 100 most popular characters in this country, kids just labbed onto it. Because we gave them what they were already in love with. And while that happens, while the fandom exists for these big marquee content pieces, something else happens as well, which is Mera Wala Pink, which is those smaller fandoms that, also, that equally exist and are strong and potent. You cannot, and this is, I think, the true beauty on digital where you completely unleash these smaller pockets of fandom which were up till now not available on TV. Let me give you an example. On TV, the preschool segment, less than four years old or so, their share on the kids viewing on TV is close to about two to three percent. On Wood Kids, that specific small segment garners 12 to 14 percent share. In the non-digital era, the focus was not on having content that appealed to the girls. Did not have any 
content that appealed to the preschoolers did not have any content that appeal that appealed to the learning and development and diy kind of videos but on digital you can read because on tv it was all about those big marquee pieces that will get big viewership numbers and that will hence subsequently also get big monetization numbers but on digital is all about on demand i will get to see what i would want to see and for a lot of the for a lot of you who might be in the business of content acquisition or in the business of commercials you need to very clearly understand and think about what your strategy is going to be are you only going to play the game of big marquee pieces because they are not going to become not going to become they already have become really exorbitant to acquire to buy to create what you can also think is of creating this parallel universe of smaller fandoms which can do the job equally well if not better and of course the mom is always right this is one of the segments this is one of the consumer segments where the consumer very clearly is the kid but the gatekeeper or the customer very clearly is the parent but let me ask you one question on whose phone do you think the consumption of kids content on wood happens the most the father or the mother guesses mother right i mean it's it's intuitive just like touch screen is intuitive to the kid the answer of mother is intuitive absolutely wrong answer the answer is the father and that's not because the mothers are chatting and whatsapping with their friends and not handing over the phone to the to the kids in this country unfortunately the better quality phones rests with the father the better quality data plans rests with the father the mother invariably ends up using the discarded phone of the father second hand phone main naya kharita hu tum ye wala pakdo unfortunate but then it essentially means that the phone is that of the father that's primarily used but two implications from a product side and from a marketing side from a product side safety and security all the parents who might be there in this in this audience we all fear what exactly is my kid watching right there's a huge safety threat there's a huge security threat wish there was a way that i could have a tool which could essentially mean that he would only get to see the content that he is supposed to see and is your app and the kind of content and the kind of interface and the kind of features that you have made enables that is the question that you need to ask on voot we did a very simple we took a very simple initiative which was about voot kids pin that is the parent when he or she sets a pin he can only watch the kids content and not anything else but are you thinking about that marketing from a communication point of view you cannot have a communication that only appeals to the kids well you can have but i don't know if it's going to be effective enough because you need to build a kids favorite and a parent approved brand and we did a small communication which was about which which emanated from the inside that kids are masters in negotiation they want they will get what they cry for at any cost but parents know these antics really well and they are okay to reward their kids till the time they know that it ends up in a good behavior from their kids side or in a goody goody behavior so it's a endearing one while someone might think ye to tum kya galat dikha rahe ho blackmail ho raha hai the kid is randomly doing stuff so that he can get the phone 
But guys, this is what's happening in the households. I mean, either you capture the entire play, the entire role play, the entire interplay, or you say, okay, I'm not going to be capturing that, I'm going to be showing some other utopian world. This is something, the slide you have already seen, entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. Kids don't believe in, okay, today I'm, for these few hours, I'm sitting at home in the living room, I think I want entertainment. Remote, let's watch something. Okay, now I'm stepping out of the house, now I don't want entertainment. I'm okay to get bored, I'm okay to not be entertained. Sorry, excuse me, this is not how kids feel, this is not how kids behave, this is not how kids act. They have this inherent need to be entertained, to be constantly be busy, to be constantly fiddling with something or the other 24-7. And it shows in some very, very interesting data. For the adult <coughs> content, while most of our consumption happens on Wi-Fi, which essentially means either, at, either in the home or in some office setups, for the kids' content, most of the consumption actually happens on mobile data, which essentially means a lot of the consumption is actually happening on the go, which emanates from this strong belief, from this strong want and need to be entertained always. I will just show you one more piece, the last piece of communication, which captures about different places, different occasions, different use cases where people, where kids are really wanting to watch their favorite cartoons, their favorite content, and if, the, and if their world is devoid of that, they are angsty, they are sad, and they are bored. And boring is the worst word for a kid of that age. And the last one. And this one essentially is about, and I thought it's, imp it's imperative, it's important for me to talk about it, screen time. This massive debate that's happening around the world, how much is enough, how much is less, too much of screen time can do uh, big, big harm to the kids, so we should do X, Y, Z thing, we should, we should make them stay away from that, blah, blah, blah. 2,500 years ago, Socrates decried the use of written knowledge, saying that it will erode memory and knowledge. When printing press came into play, people said this is going to be the worst thing for the moral outrage of the public at large. When radio and TV came in, everyone cried that it should be brand from the kids because it can distract them from studying. New media has always been a big problem area worldwide. Whether it's a boon or a bane, it's up to us. The approach that we need to understand is that each of us, not just kids, each of us sitting in this room right now have changed have fundamentally changed the way we live because of these devices. But these are mere devices. They are tools and they are neutral. They on their own cannot do anything. What we do with them, how we demonstrate that to our children and what we allow them to do with it is what will finally lead to the outcome that we desire it to be. Riding a car could be dangerous, but riding a car can also be done safely. Same is the case in the case of internet. My only urge to you is that A, the world increasingly is going to be about digital, digital screens, it's imperative for us that we speak to our children, we inculcate the right values and the right way of using those screens 
for their benefit and for our benefit because one thing is for sure on demand very clearly is going to be in demand thank you guys i hope you guys have a great day and uh, great sessions uh, in the balance of the day today thank you if it, if there are any questions i'm uh, okay to take them if there aren't any yes talk in the outside. back from two years to 10 years basically. So is there any specific segment uh, of kids you're targeting and how do we basically take care about the UI UX for the different age groups all together on an OTT app? Look, currently on Wood at least we have been catering uh, to two to 10 with a lot of uh, preschool content and uh, because they are primarily all animation videos, right? Uh, today kids are also increasingly becoming older at a much earlier age, a kid of nine years today, and the kind of stuff that he would want to see and, and that he sees would be very, very different from, the, from a nine-year-old kid 20 years back, right? So things have changed radically. What are the different things that we have done on our platform? I, I think, uh, or, or from a UI UX point of view, I think I briefly mentioned a few of those things. Uh, whether it's from a safety and security point of view, uh, you know, I think that's the most fundamental piece that one needs to enable. The other is easy discoverability of characters. So while for the rest of the platform, we put thumbnails of content pieces, of shows, or thumbnails of what happens in that specific episode or in that specific video, in the kids section, we actually only put thumbnails of the characters. So that ca kids love characters. Beyond a point, they do not care about a specific video. For them, that is the way through which they discovered the world of uh, a Motu Patlu or a Shiva or a Gattu Battu or a Pokemon or a Benton. So very, very prominent, very, very prominent. And, and if you see the size of the thumbnails on the kids, as opposed to what you will see on the rest of the platform, it's drastically different. And, uh, and, I th uh, and the other is kids do not understand this concept of clicking onto the hamburger menu and then uh, clicking on, OK, recommendations and your most favorite videos. Everything primarily has to rest on the main page. The more you ask the kids to do, the more dropouts you will get to see. There are just few of the things. I think there's a whole literature on how interfaces need to be made more vibrant. What are the size of the buttons that need to be there so that you can appeal to a kid who is two years old versus a 10 year old? Look, a seven year old, a seven, seven year old man, a seven feet man, okay, and the kind and the size of his hands would be very, very different from a five feet woman. Leave aside the kids we're talking about over here, right? How does your app, how does your interface, how does the entire experience of it changes radically? These are things that we all need to ponder on. Hi, Akash. Uh, Bharat Hi. from Green Gold. Hi. Uh, your network has a unique distinction of having the number one kids channel and probably the biggest OTT for kids. You are the first movers in this business. You have such... Uh, cumulative knowledge of the kids' business now with Nick and Wood Kids. Why haven't you ventured to make an original series for Wood Kids yet? Look, it's a, uh, it is not a decision that we will not make original content, right? We are 16, 17 months old from launch as far as Wood is concerned. And when we started off, we essentially started off as a platform first. We have the entire strength of the network with the expertise that lies within the, within the Nick team who have been creating such mesmerizing stories, right? Every team has their own unique strengths. And I think it's important to leverage that rightfully. To say that we will not be making original content in the, in the kids' space going forward, of course not. We would certainly be, and 
uh, you're possibly preempting a few of the things you know that you might get to see in the next two to two to three months and you'll get to hear it on press as well there are multiple discussions multiple initiatives that are being taken where both the channel team and the platform team are talking about discussing and putting this thing in execution just a small follow up uh, yeah. why i'm why i'm asking this question is so far ott's generally in the kids space have always been a catch up module yeah. for not only nick and for others but with the amount of ai that you already have in built into your app i think uh, you can very cleverly build an original series that has the biggest chance of being a success right away completely agree so Com that's the reason i was persuading you is that not the path that you would want to take sooner than later no no completely agree the only small correction in you know on which you mentioned unlike tv show uh where there's a where there's a longevity of the story right and if i miss something uh, on tv i would need to go on a digital platform to do catch up kids do not understand the con the concept of catch up right they miss something they will not keep mulling over it oh god i have i had missed the motu patlu this episode last night now i need to catch it up on voot or or anywhere else so catch up as a phenomena doesn't exist as far as the kids segment is concerned but i agree to your point uh, this is a latent need and uh, the only thing i can uh, tell you is that we are all working uh, ferociously towards it 